Hey, it's the Chief Bonding with Board Games and a little impromptu live. What are we doing? Well, Monday is my normal day off, but uh, this package from Phalanx Games showed up today. This is Europe Divided. Now, it was sent before all the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus stuff started. Um, so I was, one, curious, you know, a regular, I know people flying back and forth is disrupted, and I would imagine packages as well. So what we're going to do in this is I'm going to do an unboxing live. I figured, heck, why the heck not? Um, we will talk a little bit about a review I just put out. Let me get the glare off of that, of Interceptor Ace from uh, designer Greg Smith. Um, very, very fun. And if you're wanting to socially distance, <laughs> this is a good way to do it, although you can play it two-player. Um, we'll talk about that. Let me get comments up here because I don't have it on the right area. So no comments yet. Five people watching. Feel free to come in if uh, if you do wish to comment. And then we'll talk about um, I did an unboxing that will be coming in. So GMT has all of their, I almost want to call them folio games, but their expansions for the Combat Commander system. And um, I actually shot all these with the Combat Commander Pacific Hello Stalingrad, which showed up, and I it was too long, so I broke them into two, and I need to get in and edit that just so you can see what components are in with this, but that'll become be coming later. John is in. Sweet. It took social distancing to make the live show. Yes. Also, on that note, and then I'll come in and open this, um, it was weird. So I'm home anyway. My kids, it's spring break here um, this week anyway. So that actually worked out well. They've been off since Friday. Although schools are talking about being out an extra week, my boys are thrilled. <laughs> They're like, please, please, this is like a, a special virus snow week. And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad you guys are thrilled. Um, my, uh, my mom and stepdad, who are both in there, well, almost eight, stepdad is in his 80s. They came over. And of course, um, mom had had the regular flu and that about got her. So, ooh, so they're being cautious. So I get all that, but I run out my boy, uh, oldest son, Bo, who pops in the show every once in a while, loves cinnamon rolls and so do I. So he's like, dad, run out, grab some cinnamon rolls. And I went to two places, couldn't find any. And the social distancing was throwing me off. I, I, you know, people are keeping that buffer, which is good, which is good. So let's skip right into opening this up. Part of my uh, discussion when this showed up um, that I put in the description of this video was this was coming like, I don't know, they eight, 10 days ago before some of the stuff started to happen. And now I'm wondering, you know, how shipping even going to be disrupted? But I love Phalanx with their box and their tape. <laughs> I don't know why. So rather than even... I'm going to be taking it out of the shrink, but I love how Phalanx is really coming into the fore, forefront. So I've uh, cut all the tape just so I can open it up without any hassle. A um, little bit of bubble. Let's get that out of the way. Um, let's see. they got a little flyer here. So that's kind of neat. And on the back side, it looks like a word from Jaro. So I don't know what this is. Um, what's neat is... Um, Looking at this, sorry, share it with you. So you can see successors. I have not seen Rocket Man. Boy, do I want to try that out. Um, Freedom should be coming soon. Oh, Lordy. Can't take that. That's work, but I know what's going on with that one. Um, Fire in the Sky is listed on here. Let me bring that in closer so you guys can see that. I don't think I've seen that. Freedom, I had a preview copy. And uh, same with uh, Race to Moscow, which looks excellent. So uh, Fire in the Sky. Wow, I'm going to have to research some of that. Hannibal versus Hannibal, Hannibal Hamil Carr. All right, so let's look here what they're doing. Um, is there something in this? It doesn't feel like it. Um, okay, spacer, just to keep the box from shifting around. And I would imagine on occasion they have bigger boxes. So maybe this box fit, fits everything. All right. I love that. 
I will ship games out sometimes, and I'm going to save both the packaging and those little foam deals. Who else is in here? Let me put this like so, Well, then we'll open it up. Um, Nathaniel Robinson is here. Martin Wallace is your jam. Yeah, I do love Martin Wallace games. Um, so that Rocket Man, if memory serves, is a Martin Wallace game. Yep. So hopefully, um, Phalanx wants a review of that. I don't know. I haven't been tapped for that. Same with successors. So who knows? Maybe I've fallen out of vogue. I am a little weird. Oh, by the way, the shirt was chosen here. Um, so of course these are the uh, walking dead characters, but they're doing the Pulp Fiction kind of pose, a little genre shifting, but, uh, social distancing, <laughs> social distancing, stay away, stay away. I do. They, so in town here, um, when I was getting off work Friday, they'd put out the order in our County. Uh, we weren't going to be arresting anybody, but they said no gatherings of groups larger than 250. Okay. Church was out. That wasn't going to happen. Um, and then I started hearing just through the grapevine that it was being moved to a hundred. And now I've seen on my, uh, my feed from work, it's down to 50, but I think we still need to have some folks over for some board gaming. I never had more than 50 people over for board gaming yet, but, uh, we'll see. So, um, again, stunning, um, artwork here and, Here's the back, and you know it's only 720p with a live show. That's probably the one thing that keeps me cautious from doing an unboxing, just because until they get to 1080, you can't see everything you could. But I thought I want to go live. Uh, all the social distancing. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's see what else going on. Uh, John says I pre-ordered uh, Fire in the Sky a while back. Um, a way back, Hamtag had me almost buying a used copy. Yeah, I remember, was it Greg or Judd that was talking about it? I didn't, I must have missed the news that Phalanx was doing it. That surprises me still. I didn't know that. Um, but then I heard about the Phalanx version in the works. All right. Um, I missed that. That was news to me there. I don't know. Maybe I saw it and forgot it. That happens to me too. All right. Let's see. There's some rough like stuff on the bottom here. Uh, looks good. Let me open her up. So a competitive game of post-Cold War influence over Europe. David uh, Thompson and Chris Marling are your designers. I'll work on keeping the glare off. Gosh, I'm just telling you, I love that artwork. The idea that they went just huge with the face there. So let me tilt up and see if we can get some of this. Um, yep, it was Greg. Thanks, John. And uh, yes, off their site. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have some glare issues. See, so, yeah, we'll figure out how to do that. All right, so rule book, I'll come through and we'll just uh flip through this in a little bit. And I'll hold things up after I get them out, I'll hold them up to the camera. Uh, what do we got here? So, a player aid, it's like a uh, it's like a quarter sheet, half sheet. Isn't that interesting? Again, what I'll do is walk through these, then I'm going to hold them up so you guys can see them better. We'll see how this works live. Probably not well. <laughs> so another little quarter sheet for the other player. All right. I like how it's got a red and blue overtone. See if that can be. There you go. If I get it up close, you can kind of see how one's got the uh, the red for uh, for the Russian kind of side there and then the blue. Here's our tokens. Let me set this down so the game board doesn't drop out. All right. And the flip side. And again, I'll bring all these up a little closer to the camera in a bit. This game board was very nice. I'll open this in a second, and I'll bring that up too. So nice from Phalanx. You get a lot of extra bags. Love it. This was a cool factor here. You've got these. Dice, which I look at that, even more bags. I'll bring these up a little bit. So they're dice, but they're actually how you're tracking influence, if I remember from doing my preview of the copy I had for that. So the preview copy, of course, was nothing was final, but uh, love that idea. 
More bags still. We've got some cards, which we'll look at here. And then these bigger, these are states, if I remember right. Yep. And then these are, well, these are two. So I don't know. I can't remember. And yep, more bags. So, and then we have that same, ooh, crazy eyes. Wow, that didn't look good at all. How does that work? Goodness. All right. Right there, you just get some kind of... Mm, scary. All right. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got. Let's open this board, and I'll bring that closer. And then we'll start working in on, uh, on these here. I've got eight people in. Wow, not everybody else is social distancing. That's all right. Um, so we're going to come in. And this thing, this map has like this globe. Yeah, there we go. That shows up pretty good, actually. So you can see it's it's almost like you're in space. It's taken this, it's on this side, taking this cross section of the earth here. I love how that spins around. Um, that is a very nice touch. And other than the uh, face on the front, the other thing I liked in this game was how they, how they 3D'd the planet here. So I think you can see it great from there. I don't even need to, I may zoom. Let me see. I can't see anything. All right. We won't hold it there for long because I can't see a darn thing that way. Um, yeah. All right. You got forthcoming headline, current headline, current headline, forthcoming headline, all that stuff up at the top for either side. Again, looking great. Um, we'll bring these tokens back in a little bit closer just to kind of show how that looks. Again, this is a weird unboxing, but what the heck? What the heck? And sorry, I'm getting shadow from the camera itself. Sean Thompson's in. I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not going anywhere. My job prospect is probably going to get killed by the hysteria. Oh, that's sad, Sean. If anything, uh, my job, the police job, we're getting all kinds of alerts. Like one, if you're sick, take sick time. Don't make everybody else sick. And they've been alerting detectives and non-patrol people um, that they'll be covering call, calls based on um, our manpower. Like when we're at 30% and what, what will we do at 50%? Um, and adjusting how we'll respond to emerg only emergency calls if we get very depleted. So we'll see. Um, you know, obviously, I'm still uh, hoping. Uh, man, they're fast-tracking. I saw where um, I think Israel was fast-tracking some kind of uh, um, shot or something. I don't know. Uh, let me bring these in a little closer. I don't think you'll be able to read them at 720p. But idea of the sheet and the reverse side. I don't know what turn two, turn four. It looks like it walks you through. Let's see if I can bring that in. Some things that happen. So hopefully, vaccine was the word I couldn't think of off the top of my head. Hopefully, uh, some vaccine stuff comes through. Um, I don't know. We can talk more about that in a second. Let me finish the unboxing here. So again, a competitive game of post-Cold War influence over Europe. So we can see, and I'm not going to be able to fight the glare totally. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me flip through a couple pages. We'll see what these, see this one I love. Let me find a splash page. Yeah. Phalanx does a phenomenal job of splash paging. So you can see off to the side there, you've got all the components titled and explained perfectly. And then the setup with the board out kind of showing you how to mimic everything and then describing everything down below. These splash pages, um, it's very helpful for me for setup because what I like to do, um, I learn much faster if I have the game set up, the pieces in front of me, and I can reference, you know, I know what yellow EU influence dice are, or I know what um, period one new order uh, headlines look like. So I can separate them out. And then I will begin to just 
walk through the rules and kind of play as I go. Um, and that system allows me to get up and playing very fast. So let me show you. They got a couple other photos. The other thing I love, again, a lot of companies are doing it, but Phalanx is very good. Big pictures. I mean, they just use up some real estate, show you exactly what you're doing, focusing in, sidebar boxes that are explaining what's going on. So I, I love the examples here. The examples are all in gray. And um, so Phalanx's rule books have been great. I also love Academy Games rule books. Um, they're nice to look at. Um, they're set up well. And they um, allow me to read along and play as I go. And then resource stuff in the back. Cool. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And then I guess headline cards. So that, let's take a look at some of these cards here packaged up. And let me see, they've got a break tab for me to get these out. But you know what? I can never find them. I can never, ever find these tabs here. Let's see what's going on while I try to get this thing open with my fingernail. Um, Sean, yep, okay, no, hey, look at that, I was able to get a toehold. <laughs> so, I will have to get used to the social distancing. Um, so I, I opened the door for a fellow that was coming in behind me, I think that surprised him. And uh, then there was kind of an older woman in the store that I went to looking for these cinnamon rolls, and we gave her plenty of room. And... Uh, I've got to get used to that. Okay, so the back side. All right, new Cold War. Um, the year 2009 to 2019 is on there, the number two. And it looks like for your separation, yeah. So you got 1992 to 2008, New World Order, and the number one on there. And of course, and you've got... The location shown there, and I'm trying to remember the rules on this. There's some uh, there's some little verbiage down here on historical notes, and I believe the color distinguishes both kind of the area or the faction that it sits in. Yeah, and, and then you have points for like Russia, UN, and EU. And I don't remember green because I thought EU was blue. Maybe not. Yep. Looks like just green and red on these. And again, I'm sorry. I haven't, I haven't looked at this since I shot the preview. So, but again, nice cards. Very well done. Everything's highlighted on the card. Uh, Benjamin Dirks is in. Sean, uh, is, uh, is this anything like Twilight Struggle? Different designers. Um, it's kind of in the vein um, I will tell you Imperial Struggle is what's coming out from the same designers of Twilight Struggle. They're even doing like a, a little mini game uh, on Africa, which reminds me kind of of uh, what uh, 13 Days, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which I have upstairs. So it is supposed to be in that genre after. So this would be moving forward after the wall has fallen, and then what's going on there. Um, memory serving, uh, Russia is much more nimble. They can move around and do aggressive military things, and the EU has to work with the United Nations or NATO, and um, they've, they've got, like, uh, it's a little bit harder for them to pull things off, if I remember right, just from the gist of year, a year ago. So, Yes, it's kind of in that genre, but different designers. Um, let's see. Benjamin gives me a little smiley face. Thank you. What do we got? 11 eyeballs in here. Woo! Hopefully everybody gets back to work and the uh, vaccine comes out or turns out maybe everything settles down as we get into warmer weather and maybe flu season ends. 
Um, my stepdad was over, and what is he, 87? And he was explaining, I said, if you know, this is new to me. I've never seen anything worldwide like this or even anything in the States. And he said the closest it reminded him of when he was very young, I think seven or eight, and when World War II started, or at least when the Americans got involved in World War II in 1941. Because he said back then, he said there was no run on toilet paper because people were still wiping themselves apparently with like catalog paper or outhouses or whatever. I think he said he had an outhouse still. Um, so there's no toilet paper issues, but he said there was a run on sugar and flour um, and maybe salt. I can't remember. He said pepper was hard to get for a while too. And then of course, fuel gets rationed. He said all the baseball and sports games were canceled um, quickly. And so he said it, it compared most to the U.S. response um, to World War II. So that was interesting. All right. So... So these cards coming in, you've got a green side and there are blue for the UN and yellow for the EU and red for the Russians. So let me just hold up a few of these. And that I remember, but again, I can't remember specifically how they all work together. So um, I will tell you, that's one of my, I don't, and I, I can't blame it on age. My memory for like just whipping out a game and immediately remembering all the rules, non-existent. I have to go refer. That's again why I love a good, good rule set and the setup because I can get her set up and then things will start coming back. And then I got to remember, oh, that, that specific rule. Um, so uh, especially, I'll be honest, I love getting new games and kind of reading the rule sets and getting them set up and playing through. But then I'll come back six months later and I'll be like, oh, that's where my wife wants to play like something ticket to ride ish that we just, there's no rules. We know it, it just plays. So with the family, I'm always doing that. Um, but again, these cards glossy, um, they don't have the linen finish. I actually prefer kind of that glossy feel. Um, they look good. Everything's clear. The way they've highlighted the, uh, the area so that you can find it easily is nice. What does Sean say? Yeah, I've been playing a lot of TS uh, on Steam. I need to do that. I got it for my iPad, and then um, my boy's iPad broke, and mine's old, so I just gave him mine, and I haven't upgraded. This game looks pretty cool. Uh, would be nice if they had a PC version. Don't really have anyone to play the board game with. Hmm. Um, you know, maybe they will. Um, I've been working, I've got the Suburbia Deluxe Edition I picked up off Kickstarter. And to learn it, I've actually just this morning, I was going through the tutorial on my phone. Good way to learn, play around. Uh, I like how it does the math on that particular game. Anything that's like adding up how your pieces fit in, or your tiles fit in, that's great with a tiling game. Um, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, you know, I will solo tons of games too. I love when a war game solos well, or like um, Interceptor Ace. Uh, when I was a kid, I played a ton of solitaire games. So I feel you, Sean. Um, but I don't know what, uh, you don't have to get specific, but where do you live roughly? Because the beautiful thing is you may want to look into Vazel even. I was up on Vazel for a while and then they did a couple upgrades and I was playing with my board game group, not using Vazel. And now I need to re up my skills. Judd is all over Vazel. You can do a play by email thing. It works really well. Okay. You have a tabletop simulator. That's great. Um, yeah. Coming from Benjamin uh, for Europe divided. Sweet. That's what I was going to say. That's, that's even better. I didn't know where it was at. So, but use Vazel if you're in, uh, a rural area or whatever. Hey, Jest, I can't say your last name, Star Brothers. Uh, quick Twilight Struggle game, easy to learn. Yeah, uh, it's in that genre. Woo, looks nice. So enough with that. We'll uh, we'll get that on the table in a bit. I actually have um, a couple war games I have to do reviews of before I can get to this one. Um. We'll see how it works in. Kabuki Kid is in. Hey, buddy. 
He says hi to all. You know, I forgot. I can do this. I need to be putting this in there. And then we can put hi all in there. And, uh, and we got Nathan responding. <laughs> so look at this. I love when they send the plastic bags. All right. So let's see. I said I would also talk about some ham tag things. I am loving how ham tag light is working. And Judd's having fun. He keeps sending me. Judd gets so excited. You can see it on the show. Uh, he's, he keeps sending me like ideas and let's do this. Let's do that. Um, we are actually, I'll give you a little, since you guys are in, not, I'll, I'll keep this posted for folks later too. And I'm going to let this run a while. Um, Judd and I, uh, in an upcoming, we haven't even filmed it yet. We're actually going to, I don't know if we've titled it, but we're going to retire. I think is what we're going to, we're going to retire some of our tried and true go-to games. So sneak peek just for you that are here and anybody watches. I will tell you one of mine that will be on there and just mine, B-17. Okay, I go to it all the time. I talk about it. It's the game I've played the most of for sure. Some of you may know some other games I play a lot of too. We are going to retire more than one. So what does that mean? Hey, uh, real quick, check Razor76. Let me highlight it so I can get it in. Woo. We've got Hello Chief. First off, thanks for the increase in content lately. You bet. Uh, and second, just curious, how many games do you own? Oh my God, I got, I think a thousand, which is obscene. That's not good at all. Well, okay. Who cares? It's good. Sub commandant 73, loving a ham tag light. Great. Now I, I hung us. Ooh, B17 is sold. Kabuki. Oh, I moved. Went to Nathaniel. Uh, B17 is solid. Oh, I thought you said sold there for a second. That's what I get for not looking. I was like sold. No, don't sell it. Now. That's perfect. Let me come back to Nathaniel. What, what does it mean to retire in this context? Perfect. I hung that on purpose. So, boy, there's another comment about America Bomber, but we'll talk about retire. Retire means I can still play it, do whatever, but it's not going to be allowed on any of the top five lists. So we've had some, some folks comment and say, you know what, if you bring up um, a World War II game, B-17 is going to be on it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I could totally see how people are like, well, we know that's going to be in the one or two. And uh, uh, so Judd and I talked, we're going to retire a few games, which means we won't be able to add them to a list, which means we'll have to dig a little deeper, play a little more. Um, but we have the depth to do that. So our key was they may still make it into like an honorable mention or we'll say those that shall not be named or something would be here. But uh, we're going to retire more than one. And then that means our list should be a little more diversified. Um, let's see. Have you gotten, uh, let me bring in this question from Sean. Have you gotten to America Bomber yet? You know, I haven't had that in. I got a hold of Greg Smith saying, hey, are you interested in sending a review copy? And uh, he actually said, uh, I thought he was sending one, and then Interceptor A showed up in the mail. And I was like, okay, I don't have that either. I, I love that. And just post the review of that. It's 180 degrees from B-17, Queen of the Skies, with the same feel. I call it one man, one fighter, one mission, which is shoot down those bombers. Um, maybe it's one man, one mission, one plane or something. I can't remember. I had a tagline. Great tagline. I don't remember it. Um, based on playing Interceptor Ace, I would love America Bomber, the evil queen of the skies. That looks so much fun. The nukes are in. We're into the 50s with some Super Saber 86 coming in at them. It looks great. Um, hopefully, uh, I don't know. See, Compass Box, Greg told me Compass Box does not send out review copies, period. And I've got so many review copies coming in. Occasionally, I'll buy something. but. Um, a lot of times, you know, if I don't have the review copy coming in, um, I've got the whiskey show, boom, I've got the board game show. So um, I still may get it, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully they'll send one, but Greg sent me that one directly. Um, let's see. Don't have B-17, but have target for today. That's interesting. I have that too. Um, I haven't really gotten into playing it too much. It's more the strategic planning of how you're going to take on 
you know, in the abstraction of the bombs. It's like strategic level. And then um, above the Reich feels like organizational level. So it's how do you attack that bomber box? What are you doing? Keeping your Stoffel, you know, together. And then Interceptor Ace feels like it's the mano y mano. Um, let's see, Nathaniel Robinson, no more Mark Herman. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you're saying Judd won't be able to bring his name up. I think he'll be able to do that. Will, there will be a game that will retire. So we we like talking about Mark. Let's see, uh, subcommandant. Oh, let me, I'm forgetting. I need to highlight these. Um, let's see, uh, subcommandant, you have joined the cult of the new with his little tongue emoji. You know, always. Um, there's some games I've played deep, deep play. Um, and part of me still wants to do that. Um, but I also love, I, even as a kid, I loved getting different games and the game smell and learning the rule set, seeing how this designer did this or that. Um, boy, my collection is crazy. You think the liquor is crazy. I've got more board games over there and over there and over there and upstairs and, uh, Ooh, people come over and they're like, oh my God, you can't play all these. I'm like, I know, I know. I can't drink all this either. <laughs> all right, let's see. John, B-17, Queen of the Skies Forever, a Hall of Fame game. Yes. See, instead of retiring, I'm thinking maybe we call it the Hall of Fame. Who knows? We can call it anything. Whoops. I clicked. Oh yeah, no, I got it. Call it a Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, let's see. Nathaniel. Uh, Greg Smith's Zeppelin Raider is very underrated. Makes you think differently than the fighter bomber games. You know, I keep hearing about it. I haven't seen anything on it. Here's one of the weird things. He's this prolific designer, and it's all through Compass Box, I think. Or Compass Box. Compass Box is a uh, is a independent bottler of whiskey. Hello. There's my two worlds combining. Compass Games. Um uh, and Greg told me when I first reached out to him, he he said um, Compass Games has a rule. They don't send review copies because anybody with a camera and an internet connection is a reviewer nowadays. I'm like, fair enough. I was like, okay. And uh, he said, sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm like, oh, you didn't hurt my feelings. First of all, I'm a police sergeant, 25 years of law enforcement. You can... Telling me the truth of what a company's opinion is does not hurt my feelings. Um, I'm also not just a guy with a cell phone and an internet connection. So that didn't bother me either. Um, I realize everybody's a reviewer now and everybody has a YouTube channel. So whatever. Um, and then I think he dove a little deeper and looked into both Hamtag and Bonding with Board Games. And then he said, uh, you know what? I've got my own copy. I've got extra copies as a designer. I'll send you one of mine. I even told him I'll pay you for the shipping. It doesn't seem fair. And he said, no, I got it. Um, so I was like, way to go, Greg. And Greg's a retired military officer. I think he was a lieutenant colonel. That might have been it, too. I was a uh, medic in a light infantry unit uh, specialist and uh, just in the reserves, no combat time. But we had a connection that kind of grew there. Uh, Sean says, I saw America Bomber online and it sold out fast. Wow, I already sold out, kicking myself for not getting it. I bet you they'll make another one. I didn't know it sold out. So I probably won't get a review copy of that at all. And that's fine. What does Compass Games need me to do if they're selling out? Nothing. Nothing at all. I don't overvalue my importance to the YouTube community or board games. I am what I am. And I am a little weird too. So let's see. A matter of fact, a little bit later, because this is not for kids, I'm going to pour me some whiskey. Heck, who says wait? This Mirador is um, from a uh, Waco, Texas distillery called Balcones. Yes, it's like balcony, but it's Spanish. And uh, they make unbelievable whiskey. If you have a total store near you, it's you can probably get some Balcones there. The Mirador is sold out much like America Bomber. It's like a scotch deal. Now, my son, my youngest son may come out here. or that, Maybe that's my older son. We'll see. Um, hmm, for a Texas distiller, um, those that, well, first of all, go check out the uh, Scotch Test Dummies if you like anything whiskey related or fun stuff. That's what this hat is from.
So let me see. Let me read some more comments, and we'll come back to some of my thoughts. Uh, Subcommandant, hey, and how about Hamtag Light Hall of Shame? Games you bought? You know, I've thought of that. I actually have that on my list. Uh, high expectations turn out to be complete turkeys or duds. I added in duds. I love that idea. Matter of fact, let me take a photo of your comment because I'm going to share that with Judd and then we can give you credit. Um, great idea. And we want to get back to doing some board game stuff. We, Judd and I love all kinds of games. So there's some group games we don't like as much of. Um, I would love to do like games we don't like and then just see the, the nerd rage happen. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Check Razor 76. After years of playing, quote, hobby games. Whoops, it's sliding up on me. I should, it's too small to read off on my thing on the side here. Are there still any mass market games you enjoy? Yes, there is. I still occasionally break out Stratego and a few plays of Clue. You know, uh, uh, for a while there, my youngest son was liking Stratego. It's that whole element of where do you hide your flag? How do you defend it? Where do you place bombs? And uh, so, yeah, we played a little bit of that. And then they had some cool Stratego stuff. What was it? Stratego Waterloo, I think, that I have. And I broke out, actually, uh, um, when we were doing a, uh, a ham tag. Ham tags drawn me to look at some areas, Napoleonics in this case, where I'm weak. And I saw that, and I thought, that's perfect for me. Um, so, yeah, um, I think we broke out Sorry with my son, Bo, just to kind of show him how that works. And uh, I've got a backgammon set around here. I love backgammon. And I was even playing chess with my son. Um, and um, that is fun. But now we're kind of going into ancient times. Let's see. Kabuki, they should be wise and just be picky about sending review copies to war game channels. Yep. Here's my view. They can do whatever the heck they want. You know, I mean, um, I think the owner got burned a little bit where he gave out review copies and then nothing, nobody shot a review. And one of the things that people, uh, Tom from uh, Dice Tower, Tom Vassell taught me this. When I take a game or accept a game, I never promise a review. I never promise a review. And it could happen. So, and I've had a couple um, that, um, oh, shoot, there was one from Europe where I read it. I can't remember. And the rules were translated so bad. And I was like, man, this could be a great game. Um, but the translation's not good. And I even talked to the uh, guy that did the translation. Or no, he said he was going to do it. And then they rushed it and sent it through somebody else. So I will not do a review on that game. One, I can't learn it. But it's not even something I would trash because the game could be good. Just the translation didn't work. And uh, so that one, I didn't do a review on it. And uh, the owner even got a hold of me. And I was like, man, I, no offense, but I, I can't make heads nor tails of this. Um, and usually I can pick up a game pretty good. So uh, I did not do a review of that. But when someone gets a hold of me and says, will you promise to do a review by X or in this year? No. And if they don't want to send me a game, fine. I tell them, you know what? The odds are I will. And I like to do an unboxing, and then I like to do a review. But I don't ever promise the unboxing either. So I've got enough games, and I even have a dream. Listen to this dream. This is a, a, a hardcore board gamer dream. I have some games on the shelf that I haven't played in 20 years, and I know I won't get rid of them. I'd love to go back and relearn them and play them. I even have one. I picked up City Fight when I started like collecting again. And um, and a guy redid the rules for City Fight, which is like a game from 1982 or something. And gosh, I want to play that. But it is fiddly in pieces and a lot to learn. So part of me says if I quit getting review copies, I can dive back into my own collection. <laughs> so I may be shooting myself in the foot so that I can go back and, uh, and play some other stuff. We have 10 people on. That's how weird I am. So let's see. Exposure is key. Sorry, I'm probably responding to something. Oh, yeah, for uh, Compass. I agree. They had their, like, um, their catalog is this, like, piece of paper that unfolds, and it's just a list of games. I had no idea how many games they had. And I didn't know Greg Smith was such a prolific designer um, until I 
Uh, I mean, I, I didn't know his name associated with the sub games, hunters and all that. Um, I just hadn't played it. And, um, you know, that, that's just, I can't play everything. I don't search and hunt everything. And I'm so busy with what I got on the table, excuse me, that, uh, I don't know everybody. And, uh, I'd love to hang out with Greg. I can tell Greg and I'd get along great. Greg Smith. He asked if I would be going to WBC before the pandemic happened. And I said, I don't think so. I've been traveling for the whiskey show. Um, my co-host there and I got flown out to Ireland, Waterford Distillery um, from uh, Mark Rainier that uh, retired after taking Brook Lottie to massive levels. So the whiskey show is, I mean, when you're getting flown around the world, uh, that's going to take my vacation time up. And it's fun. Let's see. I'll play older versions. Let's see. I like, hold on. Let's get Sean up here again with Interceptor Ace was sold out too, at least at the sites with lower prices. That's another weird thing. Compass uh, Games has some high prices with lower quality bits. If you watched my review, um, I talk about um, like three things that are a little negative. The uh, counters I thought were more old school and they're small and they're concave. I had to break out my tweezers and uh, those are on display in the video. Um, the uh, charts seemed a little bit haphazard. They weren't put together as well as B-17 Queen of the Skies, 1983, with the way they coded them with color and number and how they were sectioned together. I thought that's the gold standard. Um and that probably has nothing to do with Greg. That has to do with whoever's developing it at Compass. And then um, the different dice, a 20-sided here, a 10-sided here, a 6-sided here, two 6-sided here summed, two 6-sided here percentile, uh, or not percentile, um, uh, 10s and 1s. And that got a little fiddly. Still love the game, but uh, – um, I haven't heard from Greg yet. Sometimes you'll hear from a de designer and they'll go, okay, cool. And they don't care. I mean, uh, and then uh, sometimes designers get upset with uh, some comments. I don't think Greg will, but it is what it is. Hey, I'm still, uh, I st I'll still play the older versions of Axis and Allies, says Sean. Great. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep, I'm just going to go down and highlight each of you guys. Sean here says all those Milton Bradley games were fun. Definitely. Um, Kabuki Kid, we all have that dream. Yeah, I know. I keep, I've got to watch one thing. I keep talking about, well, I'll do this when I retire. I'll do that when I retire. When my dad retired, he loved to rebuild cars and he started to do it. He was retired for all of one and a half years and then a massive heart attack and died. So I need my, that meant to me, do the things you want to do now. I love doing this channel. I love doing the whiskey channel. It's also part of the hobby is not just the gaming and the drinking. Um, it's also the collateral joy that surrounds that. That's the reverse of collateral damage. What would that be? Collateral creation? Maybe. Is that stupid? I don't know. Maybe that's good. Uh, Kabuki Kid. Yeah, the Game Master line was great. Um, let's see. John um, says Ham Tag Light. Shelf of shame. Ooh. I don't know. That's not shellfish. Well, ooh, shelf of shame would be what we don't like or what we bought and didn't like. We might do something like that. Um, Nathaniel says, uh, sham, shame, shame tag, shame tag. I don't know, I like that. Ooh, look who's in. Trevor just. Hey, Chief. What's up, Trevor? Good to have you in. Um, we're not breaking any kind of social distancing rules here gentlemen and any ladies if they're in kabuki good to see you uh is that lady good to see you lady um laddie i don't know what that is hi trevor and if kabuki is a gal great i've got male and female listeners i don't care <laughs> hi trevor uh sub commandant uh shelf of shame games gathering dust that you bought and never played here's the sad thing i got great games gathering dust over there it's brutal i told you man that city fight with those new rules i had the guy that rewrote him get a hold of me and he sent me like a pdf version and i said gosh i love this man and i think he was even hoping he's trying to keep city fight alive he his i think his idea, which is a great idea, was 
hey, if you learn this and then and shoot a review, a re-review of City Fight with these new rules, it'll bring in new players. And I was like, I love it. And then I've got all this new stuff coming in, which I love too, and I just haven't gotten a City Fight. Let me taste this because I poured it. Mmm. Mmm. Any whisker, whiskey enjoyers out there? Um, let's see. Trevor says, Kabuki and I have been friends for years now. And then Kabuki says, uh, yeah, I'm a gal follower. Awesome, Kabuki. This is what I love about uh, the, the internet or the channel. I, we, or here's the weird part, too. I've been at some cons where I meet people and they tell me their name. And I'm like, oh, I don't know you. And then it could be uh, Sean. And, I'm, and I know Sean by his avatar. And as soon as I they tell me what their online name is, I'm like, oh, Sean or oh, Kabuki Kid. So love that. It's so weird, though. Um, I've had it with the whiskey side, too. Um, we've done some gatherings, and we'll meet with fans. Or when we were in Glasgow, Scotland, we met a bunch of fans and ran a tasting. And people are coming up like they know you, and they do. And until they say what their name is, you know, Kabuki Kid, then you're like, what? Oh, wow, ah, Kabuki. So it's just, uh, it's a cool factor where like they totally know you and I feel like I have Alzheimer's and I can't remember anybody. And then they tell me their avatar name and I'm, and it's like, I've I just time traveled or something. Um, are there any miniature games that you have played more than just a few times? Um, here's where the miniature thing gets weird. So I know miniature gamers can get very specific, like war gamers will say Twilight Struggle is not a war game or where I kind of know it's not a hex encounter war game, but it's still kind of war game ish. So miniature games, I have miniature pl players tell me I don't have any. I have some board games that use miniatures. <laughs> I'm like, I don't get the distinction. Um, so I would say zombie side. I love all those minis moving around. Um, I've got uh, uh, Conan, which I love. And Mythic Pantheon, which looks awesome and I haven't even played. I love the Conan, and somebody reminded me it's the river system, how you draw those cards in. And um, I call those miniatures or dudes. They're not dudes on a map, but I always make miniature players mad. So how mad have I made you with that answer? So um, I also like playing role-playing games. My boy loves role-playing games, so he likes to play a lot of Zombie side comes in again because we'll kind of role play zombie side. So um, he, uh, if a board game does a heavy role playing thing, he'll dig that more. And I bought Fate Core because he was designing his own game and needed a system. Worked out great. That was a Kickstarter. Trevor says, "Hey, Chief, whatever happened to your uh, mentee uh, guy who used to be on your show years back? That's Dexter." I'll talk about Dex here in a second. I haven't seen him in a while, and we'll we'll chat. Um, um, well, we'll talk about it. Dexter and I haven't chatted in a couple of years, um, but I'll come back to that. Uh, don't let me forget. I will update you. Um, Sean says uh, I'd have I'd have some, but it's only nine thirty here. <laughs> oh yeah, it's morning. Well, it's only eleven thirty here. I think my wife just texted. Maybe she's got a camera on my collection, and if I go in too early. Here's an interesting thing. Let me see what she did. Um, oh, her work is starting to shut her down. I think she'll be working from home. Um, gosh, where was I going? I can't remember now. Sorry, that's my memory. Um, let's see. I have some. Uh, oh, tasting. I found out my taster, my review taster that I use for the show is way better about 10 in the morning. Before I've had other things, before I'm tired, it's like anything else. It takes a lot of concentration. Um, I also like tasting at night when everybody's asleep. Maybe some soft music is on or some some light jazz, and I'll, I'll make notes. Um, it's very peaceful, almost like um, meditation of being present in the moment um, is how I treat the whiskey. So it's slow sipping. Um, sorry, I just geeked out on whiskey with you guys. Um, Nathaniel says, uh, uh, I don't know how many times in the last six years, uh, I've seen YouTubers say Kabuki is a girl question mark. Yeah. Sorry. If, uh, I, here's the deal. I don't, I know I've got 
female listeners, uh, viewers. So uh, uh, I think one of the beautiful things about personas online is to me, it doesn't matter one way or the other. And uh, I, I will tell you one reason I would default to assuming uh, my male to female viewership is 98.5%, which they show me on YouTube to 1.5. <laughs> so that being said, though, I've also had female viewers that come up and say um, they're, they're always logging into their uh, boyfriend or spouse's account, and they just have one account, which makes sense. So I almost don't think those numbers uh, really mean much. So who knows what your viewership is? Uh, my boy watches all kinds of YouTube stuff under my account. So I'm a 13 year old boy. <laughs> oh, by the way, you should see guys that just do Minecraft stuff and get 18 million views. I'm like, oh my God. And it's some 19, 20 year old kid that I know what he's making. That means he's probably pulling down 10 grand a month, at least, if not more. And I'm like, what? Whereas my little board game niche nets me, what did I make last month? $68? <laughs> at least for the show. There's no money in it, folks. You go into something popular. Don't go into a niche of a niche. Uh, miniature game says, Sean, uh, without, without a board, basically. There you go. See, I like having that board with the minis on it. Like X-Wing, okay, I've got X-Wing stuff. I do not have Warhammer, War Machine, or Infantry, or Infinity, sorry, et cetera. So I've got some X-Wing stuff over there. Um, I haven't played that in a bit, in a long bit. I think I was buying that in 08 or whenever it first came out. Kabuk Kid says, pick is too tiny on my phone. Uh, laugh out loud. So let's see. And negative on costumes. I missed it. I must have missed something in the comments. So um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. I love the state of the um, of gaming, though, and the state of uh, YouTubing. Um, I just read an article where they're talking about the literal amounts of terabytes of data information, both podcast, blog, and video is this, I can't even remember the number. It was some crazy exponential number. And that that alone is transformative. That you can watch a, a YouTube video, and I've done this, on how to fix a flapper in a toilet. Done it. Needed help. Um, uh, I, had a, I have a problem with my box fan. God, I love my Windsor box fan. I've had it since I was two years old and the sound puts me to sleep and it's a white noise I love. And it, I think it needs oiling and some stuff. And I got on there and there's a whole hobby around box fans that are actually metal and made out of long lasting stuff. So you can go to that extreme of micro micro show all the way up to PewDiePie. Who's got, what is it? 500 million viewers and whatever he puts out, he's making one, I don't know. He's probably making 10 million a month. Crazy. Um, <laughs> and I just, the data that's coming out is unbelievable. And I, I love this era we're in and what we're doing right here is transformative. It just really is. It's the future now. Uh, Kabuki kid. Have you played any of the enemy coast to head games? I've not Dan busters, do little raids. I, I, I love those too. They look great, uh, but I have not played them. Um, post in here some of your comments on them, what you think, if you have. I'll keep moving through here. Sean says, so does everyone have enough toilet paper? That was so weird to me. I asked my stepdad the same thing. He said toilet paper, as you heard, wasn't an issue because nobody was really using toilet paper then. <laughs> or at least non-wealthy people didn't have specific toilet paper. He literally had, I think he said, the Sears Robux catalog, but it wasn't glossy pages, so it worked way better. You couldn't do it once they went glossy. They probably did that on purpose. Oh my God, that's funny. Uh, Sean Thompson, are you in California? Oh, that's for Sean, sorry. Um, and uh, Raman, yeah, I know. Um, he's near Bakersfield. Okay. Maybe you can find uh, some connections just based on the show. Uh, Kabuki, glad I had enough toilet paper ahead of time. Yeah, we got lucky there too. 
I'd even been giving my wife a hard time because um, we had these two big packs and she went to Sam's and grabbed a third. And I'm like, babe, we're running out of storage. And this is like a month ago. So we still have two big packs left. We should be fine. Um, that, that was weird though. The hoarding stuff was weird to me. I don't get it. As long as I have food and water and the, excuse me, goodness. And the tap works just fine. So, uh, sub date RPGs seem to have a fairly even male to female ratio these days. Board games similar. Wargaming is a bit of a holdover. I agree with the old grognard his, uh, historical male gamers. Yeah. Um, I love when I go to these conventions and my wife and I, before we even had kids found ticket to ride and we were Euro gaming and, uh, having folks over to the house, very, she even had a woman's group come over. It was awesome. And then when we went to the store, it was probably more, we found a group that was probably 80, 20, 80, 30, uh, role players then were still probably about 80, 20, but it's nice to see the mix. Uh, I, I have a lot of friends now where their, their couples play together. Playing games together is so good for a relationship, no matter what the couple. Um, even when I'm just when I'm playing with friends, it's so good for the relationship. So social. You're you're, you know, even if you're going against each other, you're working cooperatively. Gaming is just so great. Matter of fact, I'll give you another hidden tip. Our daughter in high school uh, was dating and she would have a boyfriend and I'd say, have him come over, we'll have dinner and then we'll just play this game, you know, something like Ticket to Ride or something. It provided the same social construct box that was so, it, it got rid of some of that weird, like, how's the weather? What are you doing? We played within a game and then I also got to see how some, some of these dudes, you can learn a lot about people playing games so I could see how some of these dudes, how they thought. Um how they picked up rule sets of the simple game. <laughs> that was kind of fun. If they could chit chat while playing. John says, uh, I'm in the San Luis. Oh, this buyer. Sorry. I keep jumping in on those. Okay. The Dexter update from Trevor. So those that don't know, as a cop, I was a sergeant and I'd been listening to the dice tower. Um, Tom wasn't even doing videos and he just had his podcast. And he was doing this outreach thing. I'd been, I was in the army. I was over in Korea just for a couple of weeks. That was non-deployment. Um, but I was over there and he was talking about some different bases or forts, uh, camps, they call them, that he was going to and gaming with these military folks. And I thought, isn't that a cool outreach? And uh, there was a high school that was in my patrol area and I ran a patrol section of guys and gals. And I thought, I know a couple of these folks game. Let me bring these officers together and see if we can game at the high school. So I went to the high school, having to be Southeast high is what we called it and talked to their SRO. It's a police officer that works in the school. So they sometimes teach as well. And he put me in contact with AVID, which is advancement via individual determination. And I talked to that teacher and they said, we'd love to have you in. We got two AVID groups. If you can come in every two weeks, you'd be hitting each group once a month and I will use it on a Friday and it'll be like a fun thing they can do. And I explained to her also how the social aspect works, the learning, uh, the cooperation, all these things are also reinforcing education and social interaction. And she agreed hundred percent, knew several of the games I was talking about. And for us, for the police, we were in uniform and most of our contacts with high school kids are either stopping them and they get their first ticket, minor in possession of alcohol, and sometimes minor in possession of marijuana. And that's their first interaction. So we're definitely the bad guys. And I wanted to have a positive interaction, loved games. I knew it was a way to bring my team together. Some of my uh, having to be all male officers that wanted it. No, no, I had one female officer later. Rebecca joined as well. And uh, we went into the school and it was awesome. And the very first time I'm there, Dexter, uh, Dexter loved Ticket to Ride. And uh, he even, next time I was there, he came up, he started calling me Chief. That's where Chief came from. And he says, Chief, you know, I got on, uh, it was because I was in uniform. I was a sergeant, still am. But he'd actually gotten online uh, which was still kind of novel then. 
And he'd never bought anything online. And he bought Ticket to Ride and was, was attempting to play with his family. And that was working fairly good. So Dexter, I tell Tom about this. Tom says, do a digital auto recording and send it to me. I want to put this on my podcast. I was like, what? And then Tom and I strike up a friendship and then on and on and on. But where are we at with Dexter now? So, um, well, I had to bond Dexter out of jail <laughs> once. That was a couple of years ago, three years ago. That was, it was minor. He had not paid a ticket and it went to a warrant and he had a suspended license and he was driving and got stopped. It wasn't even in my patrol area. Not that that would have mattered. If a judge put out, puts a warrant out for your arrest, you will get arrested. There is no option. So he got arrested and uh, it was in a small county and I think he had a headlight out or something. So he got stopped. They ran him. He got arrested. He called me late at night from jail. That sucked. Hopefully my sons never call with the same deal, but I said, I'll come bond you out. So I went up, bonded him out, uh, drove him to his girlfriend's house. Um, and I didn't put any restrictions on this. So I said, I have no problem helping you out, brother. You know, you got to pay your tickets. You know, uh, I tried to set him up. I, uh, there was an apartment near where he was trying to get a job and it would allow him to walk to work. And I was explaining to him, that if he could live near where he worked and there was all these food restaurants around the area and stuff that he could save so much money, gas, insurance, um, maintenance, that it would really get him a jump start, And that just wasn't working out. Um, and you can't make anybody do anything. And, uh, but my internal rule was he kept telling me he'd pay me back. It wasn't that much money, but I'm a firm believer in, my, my internal rule was if you pay me back, I'll be willing to bond you out again. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, and he said, hey, chief, I'll, I'll pay you back. Uh, let me get my paycheck and I'll pay you back in a couple of weeks. I'm like, hey, we're fine. You don't have to. But my internal rule was if he paid me back, I'd be willing to bond him out again. Kind of like credit. Um, and then his phone didn't work anymore and I haven't seen him and I tried to reach out and it's like a dead space. I wanted to let him know, dude, you don't have to pay me back. I won't bond you out again. It's not a bottomless well, but, uh, but no hate, no nothing. Um, here is another sad part. Um, then I'll get to some of your comments. So he wanted to get into law enforcement and he ended up getting into a non-physical fight with his girlfriend, but he broke her cell phone. That will get you a domestic violence charge of criminal damage to property, and he did, and so the cop job was out, at least until he had probably five-year buffer. I explained to him, man, you can't be doing stuff like that. Um, but before that even happened, he had gone to, and I'm trying not to put too much of his personal information out. Maybe I've gone too far, but he had, before that happened, he'd applied to the police department. And uh, he'd ridden with me a few times and uh, I was a little saddened by our education system. Um, he got his diploma, but when he went and filled out the app, we make our applicants do a, uh, they fill it out by hand and they have to fill in some stuff with handwriting. There's a lot of writing. I would say police works 90% writing. So if you can't write basic, you know, you tell me this and I can take what you told me and put it in a report. You can't do the job. Um, and the employment guy called me and asked me to come meet with him. And I was like, what's going on with this? And uh, I happened to be a detective white guy. And he said, Hey, I wanted you to see his application. I didn't want you thinking I was racist. Dexter happens to be black. I said, I don't think you're racist. What are you talking about? He goes, well, read his application because I've got to deny him. And I didn't want you think thinking I'm racist. I'm like, dude, I know you. You're not racist. Well, he had me read his application. Oh, God, the school district did not do a good job. Or they passed him on. A lot of his writing was in the form, form of like text writing. Like instead of you, Y-O-U, it was the letter U. And he, and he just, I don't think he could, he couldn't do it. And he wasn't going to be able to do the writing portions or he couldn't do them. And I'd actually reached out to him and said, hey, we're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to go back to, I, I said, I'll help you. And I went and got a second grade primer. And I said, we're going to learn Lincoln style, self-taught. 
but I'll assist you. And he was on board for that. And then he got arrested. Yeah. So, and then I haven't heard from him in a couple of years. So uh, that troubles me because yeah, to, I mean, it was to a certain extent, he's like a kid, but a mentor. I was a mentor mentee relationship. And, and then uh, not talking, I want to let him know, dude, you don't have to pay me back, but I can't even, his phone doesn't even work. He's got a new phone. I know we'll reconnect and uh, he has no problem working. He's always doing manual labor stuff. Um, but uh, hopefully we can come back around on that. So Kabuki says, yeah, my, uh, my Nana used to say how they would use the Sears catalog. Yeah, that's what I was hearing too. You're right, it was the Sears catalog. Uh, that's exactly what uh, my stepdad said. Uh, Subcommandant 73, but they look down on even young under 40 male gamers. Sorry, I missed all that. Um, let's see. They used to play Pokemon. My boy still loves Pokemon card games. He does everything Pokemon with an old girlfriend. It was fun and she actually liked it. Yeah, gaming is just social. I like to call it social lubricant. I mean that in the cleanest sense. Uh, yes, gaming is a great social activity, much better than online computer games. Yes, but online games are great too. Um, I used to play a... Uh, <clears throat> Half-Life had a mod, Counter-Strike, which then had a mod, Day of Defeat, which was World War II. I love World War II, obviously. Whoop, hold on. <clears throat> I played that all the time. I was in a ladder team. It was great. And uh, a lot of father's sons were playing that together, and it was awesome. Kabuki says, yeah, my gathering, my gaming gathering was canceled tonight. As is obvious, we are going to try certain games that work on webcam. Sweet. Mm. <clears throat> Talking too much. Need to drink water. Let's see. Trevor, let me highlight it. We'll catch up to where you guys are. We don't hear much about your daughter. Uh, stepdaughter, um, 26 now. She has her own business. She doesn't game much at all. She doesn't game. Uh, when she was a kid, we made her game when her boyfriends came over and she liked some ticket to ride stuff then. Um, she is a great entrepreneur. Uh, she has her own spa, does all kinds, kinds of cool stuff. Um, actually, this Corona stuff's kind of hurting her a little bit, um, but hopefully people will go to her still. As long as they don't have flu, she has some employees and stuff. So, um, But her name is Karen, very smart gal. Uh, let's see, as a Band-Aid, uh, gaming, oh, gaming is good medicine and just good overall. Yes, yes, and yes. Whoop, it jumped on me. See, it's jumping on me. I'm trying to get everybody in. Uh, Sean says, I missed deploying to Saudi Arabia in the first Gulf. Yeah, I came in in between the Gulf Wars myself. Uh, by two weeks, mixed feelings because buddy of mine went over a few weeks and got uh, that sickness that uh, they never figured out. Yeah, gets disability. Um, I know a lot of people thought with all the uh, oil wells burning and it was putting off a lot of toxic stuff. I don't know what was up with that either. Uh, naughty, Dexter, laugh out loud. Um, yeah, Dexter's... Uh, Dexter just needed to pay his tickets. I wish he would have got a job at that place. I told him he could have given up the car altogether. Um, but I got to remember too, you know, he's a young guy in his twenties at the time. He wanted to have his wheels. I get it. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm an old dude telling him, Hey man, if you work here, you don't need a car until you're ready to have a car. Mm, Sean says, I wish I had known you. Sorry about the burp. Uh, back in my younger days, I was looking into law enforcement as well. I wanted to be a cop since I was five. It's like I knew it and I kept thinking I would outgrow it. And then when I was 16 and I was looking for jobs, I went in like talking to my career counselor and they had me fill out some deal. And they're like, well, uh, it says here you want to do different things. You like working outside. You don't want to do the same thing every day. And then they suggested military or law enforcement. Um, I was doing pretty well in school and I was like, sweet. And then I thought, man, I always thought I'd outgrow this cop thing. And then I was just mad. I couldn't go in when I was 18, but that wouldn't have been good. It was better. I waited till I was, I was 24 when I finally got hired. Uh, Kabuki kid, oh man, tech speak on an application. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. And I was so hopeful that, uh, I mean, I literally went to a used bookstore, got a real good, like second grade primer and we were going to be working on some stuff and I was going to get him to the point because, um, police reports, you've got to be able to take in the facts and then regurgitate them, but in a more concise tight manner, not hard to do, but I told him, man, I can get you there in six months. Uh, but you're going to have to put in the work on your end as well. Cause the spelling was like all phonetic as well. And I said, you're going to have to do some stuff, but man, you would be great. And they would have hired him in a heartbeat. Great worker. Um, it helps that um, the police department's always trying to mirror population. And we're always looking for good African-American, Asian women. Um, so uh, he, he would have been great. He could even do it now. Now, if he hasn't, well, well, the arrest is for tickets. He would have to explain some stuff, but he's never been in any serious trouble. I mean, breaking his girlfriend's phone. Hello, idiot. Don't do that. I think, I think he wouldn't tell me this, but his girlfriend kind of did. I think he was texting a girl on her phone. Hello, what are you doing? And when she tried to grab the phone, he broke it. So she couldn't see the screen. So go figure that problem goes back to millennia. <laughs> uh, gaming. Hey, good to see gaming. Uh, garbage. Yeah, I can't say it. GWG. Thanks for your service. Great shows. Thank you. Uh, Gimberg. How many people in there? 16 greetings from Chicago police. Thank you. Be safe out there. Love your show. Made me a grognard. Well, sweet. And uh, if you're with the Chicago PD, uh, kudos to you. I've got a brother. He lives in, oh my, it's this, he's been in two suburbs. And I'm going to forget. Um, it's with an E and now I can't remember. It's to the south and slightly west. And I'm blanking on his little town now. Um, sorry, I didn't highlight it. And then Trevor. Here's Trevor here, Chief. Have you played Undaunted? I haven't. The artwork has kind of turned me off there. And I know that's wrong, but, uh, and I need to try it. Um, let's see. Kabuki wants to try Undaunted. AJ says, uh, go buy something. We're in my F and Thor hero pack. I have no idea what AJ is talking about. Um, so I'm not going to highlight AJ. AJ. Slow it down, man. I can't tell if you're just coming on with real questions or forward. Hmm. So let's see. We've caught you up on Dexter. Um, I tried to even find him, uh, find a new, uh, I searched him, but it's his last name is super common, so I can't find him under that. There's just too many folks, and I can't find him that way, so. Undaunted artwork reminds me of Grizzled. Yes, and I have played Grizzled, and I didn't really like Grizzled. Maybe that's what did it for me. I don't know. Uh, Trevor says, any more swattings going on near you, buddy? Ugh. Oh, no, we had the swatting that I hope ended all swattings. The bad one happened here in my town. I was actually headed home from work. The uh, swatting incident did not happen in my area of town. Uh, but it happened in a buddy of mine's area of town and um, terrible. So just terrible. So uh, we're still dealing with that. And, uh, you know, the individual that, I mean, these guys are arguing over Call of Duty and a bet of like $1 or $2 or something. And then the fact that there's a guy in California that'll take money to swap people, come on. But having been in law enforcement, there's always somebody somewhere worldwide well, and do something for a small amount of cash or not at all. And uh, knowing that can sometimes make you jaded and even scared as a cop. And then you got to remind yourself that the 90% of the world is awesome, awesome folks. Sometimes have bad moments, still awesome folks. Uh, Captain Roboto got Lincoln from Martin Wallace in, and it's been a great gateway for my wife trying to get into war games. I like the Lincoln game. I know it had issues and they had to fix some stuff or whatever. And um, I find it as a very accessible Martin Wallace-esque game. Um, and uh, my wife hasn't tried it, but I, I enjoy it. And uh, Judd and I played it and uh, we had a blast playing it. It was just fun. 
but it's light. It's light and it's Martin Wallace light. Uh, let's see. Kabuki Grizzled is fun, but very abstract. Um, let's see. Crossing Obstacles. Grizzled is excellent. And greetings from cold Sweden. Well, greetings to you. Nice to have you on board. We're at 15 with lots of comments coming in. Kabuki Kid, Ugg Swatting. I know the, the, full, the whole idea of it is just... Um, I can tell you for cops in general, the idea that you could create a bad, bad call, 911 call, that will guarantee a swatting response or a SWAT, sorry, response, and then thinking this is a fun prank. Yeah. Um, I mean, that call was that uh, uh, supposedly the quote unquote, I mean, so this is all fake from this guy's imagination, quote unquote, the son was calling 911 to report that he had murdered his father in the house, gave out this address, which was not even the address for the kid playing the game, and that he had his mom locked in a closet and was dumping gas all over the, the house and was going to torch it and everybody and himself inside. Uh, I mean, you'll get a massive police response. And here's the terrible thing. I haven't had that one happen, but we've had stuff like that happen. We had some guy that murdered his whole family and left grandma. Grandma was in the basement hearing gunshots. And the guy killed his kids, his wife, and himself. And then the cops showed up because grandma's in the basement calling 911. This is real, folks. The cops come in to... Uh, a wasteland is all I'll say it. So let's see. Enough of that. Uh, Chow, have you played um, Waterloo 1815 on table battles? Thoughts? I have not played it. Anybody else? Um, Chief, I have not. I talked too long on the other issue. We'll get off of that. Uh, let's see. Kabuki Kid. I don't envy law enforcement dealing with that. No. No. Um, so I will tell you this, and this is one reason I still love law enforcement. And I talk to, I'm a now a community policing sergeant, so I talk to community groups all the time. And they'll say, why do you do it? Well, multiple reasons. But one of them, which I, I love, is you can take any situation. And I mean any and utter chaos. So you can take that one or make up one in your head. We will send cops to it until we put it back in order. So unlike this coronavirus, which is so big, you know, it's out of my hands. So then you got to just say, okay, let's just, we've planned and done everything we can. Let's just roll. But um, I mean, you can take an active shooter or anything else, and we will continue to move toward the problem, towards the chaos, until we put it in order. And I use that as a summation of what police work is at its highest, both in honor of what we do and in terms of a job description. Take chaos and make it into order. That doesn't mean cops are perfect or anything else. Uh, I actually work in a, a high high predominance of African American and Hispanic populations, and um, uh, we're great. Love those communities, and um, I always talk plain. And uh, but that is the high order of what we do. And uh, as far as being in the right job, I love it. Um, I'm kind of an order person. I got to make sure like my shelves are nice and ordered. Uh, the bar actually, even right now, I feel like it's disordered, although everything's kind of lined up. Um, I feel like it could be in better order, not OCD, but kind of. So, but I've had here, here's one of my other signs. If, uh, no matter what country you're in, if a criminal, so we've had criminals that are in the midst of drug deals highly illegal. Um, we're talking like meth and cocaine and high amounts of money and they get robbed and they call the police because they've been robbed. And they'll say, Hey, we were doing an illegal drug deal, but we got robbed. <laughs> and quite honestly, the robbery is 
a much worse offense than the drug deal. And unless they have drugs on them or a warrant or something, we don't arrest the victims of the robbery. Matter of fact, we'd like to go get somebody that's robbing somebody with guns, even of illegal items. And I always say you can tell at least a working society and their police department if the people, even the criminals, trust the cops to come enforce law and order. It's always a good sign. I know some guys internationally that work in other places that say, uh, and sometimes the local cops can be the problem, and that is not good. And I mean the problem. We can go back in time and just look at police can be the problem. Trust me. Um, Captain Roboto, Washington's War. That's good. Let's bring it back to board games. I like that. Washington's War, a good next stop or step after Lincoln for a non-war gamer or too much. Um you know, I haven't played a lot of Washington's War. I think maybe I played it once a long time ago. So I'll let the guys comment. Um, might be too much. I'll be honest with you. If I'm playing with non-war gamers, um, anything that starts to go deep is too much. They, they want surface. I would have gone to um, the Borg and played some kind of a, uh, command and colors. Uh, I think that could draw them in deeper. Uh, John, Undaunted Normandy is a great game. Whoop, let me highlight it. Undaunted, great game, but the artwork is everywhere. <laughs> Personally, I liked it. Uh, it has a nice balance of low complexity to capturing combat simulations, of course, not at high detail. I'm going to have to try it. Uh, it sounds neat. Um, I, I'm probably not giving it its due. Kabuki. Off out loud, calling in a robbery during a drug deal. It's usually afterward, and they've lost a significant amount of cash, and they've had a gun in their face, um, and they're not happy. And uh, they'll tell us flat out, this is what we're doing. Now, we will have them in a database that says they like to try to buy or sell thousands of dollars worth of illegal drugs, but I would much rather have the robber. We do not want people getting shot killed or robbed in our city, period. Um, let's see, Captain Roboto, I did buy Undaunted and my wife really liked it. Good pick. Gosh, you're going to make me get this. You're going to make me get it. Kabuki, uh, do you have a favorite card-driven game? Um, it's funny. I'm, I'll give you another tip. We've got a show coming up. Uh, Hamtag's going to be not card driven but card assisted and you'll have to see it's basically any game with cards that aren't card driven um hitler's reich is awesome i need more plays of that but i really enjoyed it all the command and colors and the way they drive the game with those cards and how it provides the fog of war i love those that's probably my favorite it used to bug me. Oh, Combat Commander. Uh, I've got uh, um, the Pacific version. I got to get on the uh, game and see how that runs over on the Pacific side. Um, I call that Fog of Command. So I love how you can't do everything that you want to do when you want to do it. That's real world. I shared a story when I was in the, uh, we were doing a training at Fort Polk. Huge exercise. They call it a uh, JRTF, Joint Readiness Training Center. There were, there were parachutists from Germany, 82nd Airborne was dropping. Uh, our unit is a reserve. We were playing a uh, third world uh, militia military unit trained up by active duty special forces. Those guys are bad ass. And um, man, seeing, um, I think it was 10,000 guys drop um, at 600 feet at two in the morning was impressive. Um, I don't know how the, the Germans must have just been crapping when all the parachutists were dropping in on Normandy. I mean, it was these guys, when they came out of the planes, it was stunning how I knew they were out there. And I was on their side in the role game, in the uh, game we were playing. It's like a giant board game with real people. We were playing the country's militia trying to hold on 
and we were getting trained up by the special forces and we had to survive a certain amount of time. And then this airborne drop happened to help support us. So, uh, but it was impressive. Um, I forget where I was going with that. What was the question? Do you have a favorite car driven? Oh, fog of war. Um, during that deal, um, we were given this one mission and this guy, this sergeant with me, this NCO, I was just specialist, got turned around or something or didn't understand. And we were under a timeline. I was like, we've got to go now. It's right down that way, 500 meters that way, 600 meters north. We got to go now. And he would not move. I was, it was the most frustrating thing. And I, uh, I didn't get in trouble because I was right, but I finally grabbed a bunch of guys and said, we're headed there now. And he was pissed. And, uh, but they didn't yell at me because it turned out the guy was an idiot. And uh, I would imagine that's how real combat works too. You don't listen to an idiot. <laughs> we'll see though. Uh, for training, I thought I was going to get stomped. Turns out medics, they listen to a little bit more though. So Trevor, they're coming out with undaunted North Africa soon. Yeah, I saw it. It's like desert rats. Uh, Kabuki Kid, what game is in your collection that you full well know will never be played again, but you refuse to get rid of it? Oh, boy. What would it be? I don't know. Um, God, City Fight? <laughs> I'm afraid I'll never play it. Um, hopefully I will. Hopefully I will. I think I spilled a little bit of whiskey on the table. It's either whiskey or water. <laughs> um, hopefully I will play city fight. So that's my dream. I've got to relearn this, this rule set and, uh, and then I'll play it, but then I've got to find somebody to play it with as well. Kabuki. Uh, what about you? Put yours in the comment there. I'd like to see that or anybody else throw yours in there. That's a great question. Trevor says, hey, Chief, what games do, uh, do your wife and kids enjoy playing with you? Okay, my wife plays a lot of games, mostly lighter Euro, but she loves Fresco, so worker placements in. Uh, Pillars of the Earth is one of my favorite. It's my favorite worker placement game. We've got Ticket to Ride. We're doing Ticket to Ride March, where every, what are we doing it? Every Wednesday, Friday, we're breaking it out. We're on the Asia map, which we hadn't played before. We're having a blast. Um you know, we found ourselves, I would come home, she comes home, we're tired, we'd watch, there's great shows on Netflix and Prime, but I would find myself more tired afterward, and I said, you know what, let's break that habit just for a little bit. I still love a lot of the shows on, on both networks, networks, but uh, I said, let's do this TTR March, and she has loved it, I've loved it, I'm more invigorated when we're done, um, and that is, it's like a relationship assist, even. And we're going to continue doing that. And I need to get Fresco out probably in April. She loves painting anyway. So Fresco is like, right, it's her jam for me to steal a word that makes me sound stupid. Um, my son, um, Zombie Side, he loves, um, he'll, he'll want me to play Pokemon. He loves everything digital Pokemon. I think he's talking now, like, what are you saying? Um, and then he likes a lot of role playing as well. So we'll do that too. Hey, Chief, uh, any conventions planned for this year? None for me. God knows if they'll even happen. Who knows? But uh, all my travel stuff has been whiskey related lately. So sorry about that. Um, I've got another five to eight years, probably eight years on the department. And then I'll be probably making every con, every convention, whether it's whiskey related or game related. Um, Kabuki Kid, yeah. Any aside from Ticket to Ride? Um, she and I, let's see, we do a lot of Martin Wallace. She loves Medici. Uh, Medici is my favorite game of all time. Just love it. Uh, I'm talking all games. Medici is it. I love that game. Um, we want it. We have we have game nights at our house. We were trying to do it every other month, and I wanted to have a Martin Wallace theme. I got Blue Lagoon. I think it's Blue Lagoon, not the movie, the game. Uh, sitting over there, and I, I just want to do a a, uh, a Kinesia themed uh, day, um, board game day. Um, I love Kinesia's games. His bidding stuff is just, there's so much depth beneath a simple rule set. And a lot of times, not all of them, but they don't, it's like, they, it's like origami and it unfolds as you open it up. 
but maybe not origami. It's not like you're destroying the swan. <laughs> I don't know. Probably a bad analogy. David Warren. Let's see. I've been up an hour and 29. I'll go maybe two. We'll see. As long as comments keep going. We're down to 13 people. But you know what? It was a little weird driving around with the social stuff and with this game coming in. I thought, let's do something different. And I do have to feed the kids lunch. It's 1217. So I'll get in trouble if my wife's like, what are you doing? Other than feeding our, our children? <laughs> David, Judd ordered Normandy Undaunted. Judd ordered Normandy Undaunted. Never played a deck building game, but have heard so many good reviews. Now, I'm Bart, but that's all right. Judd's not around. I don't know. Maybe I got confused there, David. Um, let's see. Or maybe Judd's in and I missed it in the comments. Trevor, uh, Prob uh, will never play Robo Rally again. Now, that's a good one. I uh, have the original version with expansions and painted it all. Yeah, probably Robo Rally. I have that somewhere. I actually got the, um, oh, it used program movement, but it was the, um, oh, what's it called? I've got it. Now it's going for big money. It's like a video game company, but they put out the board game and it tells a story as you go. My son wants to play that too, and I can't remember the name. So I'll put it in the comments. Um, yeah, that one killed it. I'll never play Robo Rally again, probably. Uh, David Chief just ordered Normandy. Uh, never played deck building game, but it has got such good reviews. Thought I would give it a try. Awesome. 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 Um, I like deck building. So I think I would like Undaunted. Um, I need to play it. I just really do. Kabuki Kid, I have the original Axis and Allies, which I loved. Well, let me highlight you, which I love, but I also. Now have the anniversary edition. We'll only play that one now. Very good. I like that. Uh, Kabuki says, but we'll keep original A and A forever. Yeah, you know how much time and enjoyment you had with that board and those bits. I'm like that too. Um, I will never get rid of B17 Queen of the Skies. Um, I broke it out and played it not too long ago. And it's funny because it seemed a little clunkier and a lot more chart flipping. And I knew it was chart flip, flipping, but it was like, come on, come on, come on. Um, I'll give you one that uh, is a little bit different. Uh, Mystic Veil. Um, I love that game. It's a card crafting game where you're sliding cards into these sleeves and their transparencies. Once I got the digital version, I played it twice with people in real life again and it was so excruciatingly slow i've got it on ebay trying to sell it i just it just it was i needed that auto shuffle and the play and the play and the play and uh, deck builders for me i like online way better than in person does undaunted have an online version or a digital version uh kabuki still likes robo rally Trevor, Mex and Minions, that's it, by Riot. That is exactly it. Uh, we were enjoying that. That's my program movement game now. Love it. Haven't played it in a while either, though. Sean says, have you played Sentinels of the of the Multiverse? Uh, he has a lot of that. I do, and I played several. And then I even got the digital version because I was getting, like, it's the same kind of thing. It was like I needed something to handle all the overhead. And I haven't touched the game since, and I need to sell it. I haven't even been playing online, really, lately. Boy, have I been playing the heck. I'm like ranked number 10 on Mystic Veil Online. I play that thing all the time. I love it. All the expansions I have for it. They need to get the new expansion digitally done. Uh, yep, I got Sean Multiverse. I knew what it was. Actually, uh, let's see. Uh, Kabuki, I actually won a digital version of Mystic Veil in a contest fun game. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm the, I'm addicted to it. Love it. If I'm playing anything, although today I was playing Suburbia and, uh, I'm going to be learning that. Hopefully Liz, my wife loves that. Maybe my son too. He was like, what are you doing? I don't think my son will like that game though. Um, I'm glad I didn't get Gloomhaven. I've got that underneath my table. I've got a tabletop that I pull off. Uh, tried the stream version and the card-driven system kind of bugs me. Hmm, okay. It's still ranked so high. I've been buying all the uh, expansions and I'm not even competent to play yet. Trevor, hey, Chief, what game is coming or coming out that you're excited to get to the table? All right, Imperial Struggle. Hello, that is the 
precursor to Twilight Struggle. Um, um, I'm trying to think. We just did our list here and all those. Oh, um, Rebel Fury. Man, man, what Mark's doing with that system that he had with Gettysburg and Waterloo 1815 campaign. Sweet system. Um, it's light, but it's still heavy. It's it's not rules. It's like rules light and strategy heavy, if that makes sense. But everything's easy and easy to remember and refer. Man, so Rebel Fury, I'm looking for, and there's a few others I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, what's the Medici game? What's that Medici game? Can we see it? Um, um, it's Medici, Reiner Canizia. They've, it's even was reprinted by Grail Games, and they've got they still messed up. I didn't like the counters, the counter that goes around. Medici suffers from bad art. There's been multiple versions. Now the newest. Uh, art is beautiful. I think Vincent Dutrait, Dutrait, maybe I'm saying his last name wrong, uh, did the covers beautiful. Um, just look it up on BGG. I don't have it. Uh, I don't want to get up and walk on over there and grab it. But um, Medici, unbelievably fun game, takes 45 minutes. There's three days of trading, three rounds, basically. It's a simple auction game. Once a round, if you pass, you're out. Um, man. And it just plays great. I had, uh, we had a bunch of folks over and this was one where younger kids were, were invited as well. And there was this nine-year-old kid named Bryson and he wanted to play it. And I thought, shoot, this game isn't going to work well. And he got it right away. And he was seeing the layers beneath and he was, he was, he had some money and he was pushing other players around at the table. And I was like, oh my God, this kid's got it. And then he started saying, this game's awesome. And he came in second and I was, I had to start playing like at the highest level I could. I'll try not to just wipe the floor because you can, you can use your money bag as a club and just bang people around on there. And uh, he got it right away and he saw the depth of it. And I was like, you got it, my friend. And he was nine and he just, I mean, he was like, this is awesome. His mom was sitting there going, Bryson, what are you doing? He goes, cause he was like, using his money as a bully in one of the auctions. And his mom was starting to get on and said, no, no, he's right in with the game. It's all about how he's using his money to, because your money are victory points in that game. They call them Florence. Uh, I want, uh, Sean says, I want to like Gloomhaven, but it feels too puzzly. I'm a dice chucker when it comes to dungeon crawlers. Cool. All right. Uh, Trevor, for most expensive ham tag list, any comments that surprise you? Uh, teaser for the weekend. Oh boy. You know, I got to go. I, I look at the comments and I, I respond. Um, I can't, there were a few that were very interesting and I can't pluck them just out of thin air right now. Um, so I'll save it. I'll save it for Saturday. So, um, I, I, great comments though. Speaking of that, and uh, well, let's roll it back to that, and then I'll wrap things up here soon. So, ham tag light. Now, again, we may at some point, if Greg has a topic that he really wants to do, we may do that, and Greg would be on set. What I wanted to do was get into a rhythm again. You know, maybe it hasn't ever been in a rhythm. Um, I wanted to create a ham tag rhythm. Three people can be hard to create that rhythm with. Um, and then Greg tells you in the comments that he just, you know, we would have a topic and he'd say, nah, you know, he plays games at a depth level that I almost never get to, almost never. And so a list that would sound great to me maybe wouldn't work for him. And so he's chose to add his in comments and stuff. It doesn't mean we might not have a regular ham tag, but I wanted a rhythm. So Judd and I decided that we would have, we would just keep putting out shows. My intent, again, this relies on his work, my work, scheduling and everything. But my intent is every other Saturday, every other Saturday to have a new ham tag light. And the Saturdays in between will be the fans version, their lists and comments based on those shows. And I'll keep those rolling. We love it. Judd and I love it. We're having fun. Our rabbit trails are hilarious. I'm going to even start keeping track of them and put them in the, in the description because 
Uh, I like letting those conversations go. Now, it means the ham tag shows are not going to be tight and concise. But I found out that it's more enjoyable for us to just let Judd do Judd, let me do me. I'll break out whiskey when he goes deep down, you know, a uh, revolutionary war rabbit trail. And uh, we'll talk about that. And I think that, in my opinion, is a lot of the fun for the viewers as well. But it's also fun for us. Tom Vassell taught me early on when I started doing videos. He goes, hey, man, if at any time you're not enjoying every process, stop because you'll kill your favorite hobby. If you don't enjoy filming it, editing it, posting it, coming up with a title, if you don't enjoy it, stop or it will kill your hobby. And I was like, got it. And when I edit um, our ham tags, um, I'll be laughing. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll see my face or Judd looking at me or, you know, uh, Judd's one-liners or his depth of nerdiness with Starfleet and uh, Deep Space Nine. And I'm laughing. And I'm like, if I can have that much fun editing, it should be a blast for people to watch. Now, they're not for everybody. We know that. But that's what YouTube is. YouTube isn't for everybody, nor is our show. And uh, so love that aspect of it. So those are the ham tag plans where I'm going to keep on that schedule as long as health and work and family life and everything works. And as long as Judd is still entertained, he's got to be entertained too. I love the beauties in the chief when I was doing that. And, um, you know, uh, one of the gals had a, a divorce and a relationship deal and out she went. And then uh, the other gal just told me, hey, I'm not playing games that much. I don't feel comfortable in doing the show. And I was like, okay. And and uh, then I tried to restart it with Amelia. And then Amelia, who's a genius, she got a job. She's a software engineer, got a job in Seattle. Awesome. And boom, off she goes. And uh, she's so busy with the job and everything. Because I was like, well, maybe we can do it remote. Mm, no. Okay. That's fine. I love beauties in the chief. Um, uh, but that's fine too. And I thought, you know what, let me really dial in with ham tag and get that back to working. I want to do some ham tag, the expansion that's with, uh, I really want to bring in, um, Dan from no enemies here. He's got a great show going on, but I, I loved having him on and, uh, Paul common as well. I love having the international kind of feel to it. We'll see. I've got to iron that out right now. The focus is on, on ham tag light. Sean, I'll, I'll give you a teaser, Magic the Gathering. <laughs> there you go. Sean had a great comment, several great comments. Kabuki Kid, I spent a ton on Robinson Crusoe, all the expansions, promos, and upgraded bits. Awesome. Kabuki Kid, Magic is the king, money sucker, laugh out loud. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I've avoided um, Magic. So thankfully, I hear it's great. Nothing against it. Uh, Sean says that was a hard list to make. So many different types of games, board, miniature, card games, etc. Cool. Love it. Um, let's see. Warhammer 4K is close to second. Kabuki Kid says I managed to avoid the 40K, 40K bug. Kabuki says those vids are for me. Yeah, there you go. See, I know. And that's, that's again, what I love about this media revolution. And it literally is. This is right up there with the Gutenberg Bible, you know, having a printing press, uh, you know, uh, telegraph, radio, TV. There's so, I mean, it's so cheap level of entry to get in that anybody can do it. And then, so you've got, mundane and weird and, and, you know, board games and, and long, long and short and everybody can find their niche. And, uh, it is, this is literally a historic time. I'm telling you the, the amount of information when I can go to YouTube and figure out how to fix uh, a toilet flapper and I get walk through it exactly how to do it. Or I can go deep level Jordan Peterson, and, uh, you know, when he starts talking about, or when he was on Rogan and he's talking about how perplexed he was with man's inhumanity to man during World War II. And I was like dialed in. I was like, whoa, who's this guy? Who's Rogan got on here? Because I had those thoughts. 
and uh, and then he sat there and explained that the the mental way to think about it is not you know it, it's from the point of I went and read no, no Ordinary Men. So No Ordinary, Ordinary Men was a book that Jordan Peterson suggested that is about uh, Germany went and, when they militarized, went and got police officers. Hello, close to home, right? And they said, we're going to make you officers or unter officers, enlisted uh, non-commissioned officers. And then you're going to run regular troops, but you'll be like a behind the lines police thing. And then they used them in Poland to kill Jews. And that book is hard to read because it's like watching, well, mass murder unfold. But the book is all about how did it even get to that point? And then in that book, they talk about three groups came out. There were folks that wouldn't do it. And they felt like failures and they struggled in their life because they didn't. Hello, right answer. Then there were those that about a third that, liked it. Turned out they relished it. All right. So you can deal with that. And then there's the middle group that didn't like it. They would do whatever they could to get out of it. But when pressed would do it. Now, Joe Jordan Peterson was on Rogan's show and he talked about that. And I thought, oh my God, I haven't heard of this book about that book because Jordan then says, what you need to do is imagine you, that those are people that did it. Imagine that you could be one of those people. You don't want to be one of those people. And then figure out what you need to do so that you are never one of those people or that doesn't happen to any people. Yes. And that's when I was on board and I started reading a lot on the, that topic because as a youth, before I ever heard of Jordan Peterson or Rogan or podcasts or anything, I wondered the same thing. How in the heck do you herd people into concentration camps and kill them because it took people to do that. How do you, how did, how does that happen? Um, you know, I, I talk, our cops are, and even when I was in the military, we understand, um, you know, historically the police force is dangerous to their own population. I'm not saying my police force historically. And, uh, ugh. And so taking hard looks at things you don't like to see in history, that's one reason I love gaming uh, and World War II reading. And B-17, in a weird way, taught me the horrors of war when I was 13. How does a game do that? And I'm not kidding. I mean, it did it. So, And it was still a fun game, but I was thinking, oh, my God, what did these guys do? They flew into this hostile space and were killed and killed. Okay, there's the deep part of the show <laughs> again. All right, Sean Thompson, and then we're gonna, we will start to wrap up. Sean, um, down, we're down to nine. Wow, I've, I'm down to nine. That was a fairly recent game uh, picked up, only been playing for a few years. Uh, Sean Thompson, I don't know how we ever got by before the internet came about. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, David, have uh, oh, let me highlight it. Have you got any conflict of hero play-ins recently? Uh, know you're a big fan. You know what? I had a, my buddy Boomer was coming over. We were playing every other Monday. And um, he had a couple cons he went to. And then we kind of got out of sync. And I haven't talked to him. And I've been catching up and doing all this ham tag stuff, a lot of it on Mondays. So I haven't hit him up to play and uh, because I've been busy. But I want to get him back because we were just playing from mission to mission. And then we'd play reverse sides and just having a ball. Um, hopefully that'll come back in. Oh, back up to 11. That's what happens when you start talking about concentration camps and Nazi murderers. Yuck. Oh boy. Heavy stuff. We had to deal with some swatting and everything else. You know what guys? I think that's an hour and 48. When I get to an hour and 50, I'm going to kill it. I've never gone this far. Kill it. That's terrible with the context. I'm going to, I'm going to end the show just for today. Um, anybody got any last minute comments? I'm going to pour another Balcones. This is their Texas single malt. Uh, we'll toast out happy, friendly, gamey. Um, again, we've got, this was Europe Divided, an unboxing. Awesome. And I look forward to playing that. Um, I've got um, 
13 Days Cuban Missile Crisis, and I'm hoping I can get Liz, my wife, to play that. That's a bit of a stretch, but I'm hoping she'll go for it. Um, either way, I've got other friends I can play with as well. I hear a door opening. We'll see. We might have a kid do a cameo here shortly. It's probably time to feed, feed the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I wasn't scrolling down. Let me see. Uh, Sean, do you play old SSI war games in the 80s? I did not. It was all Avalon Hill in the 80s. And victory games. Gosh, I love that offshoot. Again, Mark Herman, genius. Um, I got so deep into it. Yeah, if it was victory games, I wanted to own it. I wanted to buy it. All their solitaire stuff. I grew up as a kid in the mountains. And I felt like I was the only kid playing war games. And uh, boy, I wish the internet was alive then because I would have, I, I dreamed of going to Avalon Con. And then, you know, lo and behold, uh, years later, I'm at uh, WBG, which is kind of the offshoot of Avalon Con. And I'm meeting uh, all these guys that, uh, that I'd only looked, you know, read in the general and stuff when I was a kid. Uh, Greg Schmickens has an article in the general from, uh, I have that article there. I'm thinking that's cool. Sean, first war game for me was Tigers in the Snow on the Apple. Oh, very cool. Um, Kabuki Kid says 13 Days is good. Yeah, it looks great. It's like that uh, Twilight Struggle Light, which is what I'm hoping. And part of my fantasy mind thinks if the wife, if Liz likes that, maybe she'll play Twilight Struggle. Probably not. Um, Kabuki, mine was Ogre, not a historical one. <laughs> good. Hmm. All right, it's 150, 151. I'm going to shut this down. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. We'll see how many views this gets. Probably not too many after it's posted, but you never know. Again, I had fun. It's about that. We had some good topics. We updated on Dexter. Um, great to have all of you in. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for your feedback on Hamtag. We'll keep having fun. Uh, it's like nerdy good fun is what I like to call it. And Judd's been on fire. I mean, he's texting me at 10 o'clock at night with a, a top five idea. And I'm like, great, I love it. So we should have topics uh, continuing. Keep putting your topic ideas in on different shows because when there's one I like, I'll throw it into my little, I've got a little notes list where I keep all these different ideas uh, for shows. And we're going to just keep doing this, uh, you know, every uh, every Saturday. I'm going to be putting out either a ham tag fan or a brand new ham tag top five. So thanks, Sean. Pleasure having everybody on. I'm going to move over and hit in broadcast. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Kabuki Kid. Thank you for having you in. All right. Thanks for everybody that's in. Uh, Trevor and everybody else that I haven't mentioned recently, better sign off or I'll be saying bye for five minutes. See you guys. Chief. Got a double tap.